Hello and welcome to the first proper guide that this channel has actually produced in a while. So this is the first guide on AU2DE in fact and it's going to be for a strat that's quite specific to it. After the Chimera got some buffs they had went from quite a strong boom normally to a very extremely strong boom. This is the 28 plus 0. Plus 0 meaning we don't make any villagers in Feudal Age. As Chimera you don't need buildings. So you can make your two villagers in Dark Age essentially. And as soon as you hit Feudal Age, instantly click up to Castle Age. This lets you have more villagers early as you're aging up, so they're producing more resources over time. You also save a lot of wood, which we'll be using to build TCs with, by not building a market in Blacksmith. So, recently I posed the challenge to the community, and I did pay out decent beer money for it. Their, the goal was to have 50 fully upgraded battle elephants, 140 plus villagers, by minute 3245. You also needed to have a sub 27 and a half, 2730 imp time. The reason for that was because that is a very useful imp time to have. It's really important to remember that if you're in a team game especially you might even need to change. 1v1 maybe lower level you can get away with it and you could probably do something a little bit more wild like trying to pull this off and you could even change it into something like Halbram, Arbram, these are the kind of things you might need to switch into as Khmer Pockets in a TG as well. So be very careful about that. It's really important to have a sub 27, 30 amp time. This challenge, nobody actually beat it. A lot of people were doing the fast 3 TC builds, 23 plus 0 in some cases, 24 plus 0 in one. And they were adding a 4th or 5th TC later. And that really slows down your amp time. And that's why I find it's a little bit less valid to try and pull off those booms. Unless you're really focusing for... Later Castle Age aggression is less imp is not particularly in your plan. I really would not recommend doing those booms for something this economy requiring, such as elephants. But if you're doing something like very fast Halbram, very fast Arbram, this is a really nice strategy to do the 23 plus 0 or the very fast 3 TCs. So no one actually beat the challenge, but this is my regular boom that I usually do in team games anyway. And this smashes the challenge by over 30 seconds normally when I do it and execute it well. This only needs 3 deer. 4 deer actually does not make that significant of a difference. Very simple build, but again I'm not going to be explaining too many of the small nuances through a build that you would normally experience um, in one of these guides. It's for more advanced players, but you could always add one population if you want in the Dark Age to whatever resource you want, and it'll make it a much more relaxed build if you're a newer player. Just as a side note, Juan Franco, my boy, in his Discord, you will find this linked as a text guide. It's a very good way to learn this. I think he's done a really good job of putting this into a text version. So I'm just going to show that quickly on screen, and you're going to find that at the links in the description of this video, including his Discord. So let's just jump into it. Keep our villagers, build our two houses, two villagers on one, one on the other. Let's get our sheep under the TC. I should also mention that I use legacy shift Q behavior. So if you see me clicking a bit weird when it comes to, for example, I'm not holding shift now, final right click is makes them start doing the action rather than them doing it right away. If you see that happen, it's because I have legacy right click behavior selected. Obviously in arena, first thing you do is you go outside and you scout out the perimeter of your um, of your walls. But in this case, we're just against uh, an AI. But in a team game in particular, especially as flank, always scout forward outside your walls towards the enemy. If you have sheep out there, then it's your fault for them being lamed. If you don't actually go and ensure that you're picking them up. So we're going to do 6 sheep, 4 to wood. That looks fine to me. And we're going to do a little bit of sheep scouting. When you are playing arena, you have loads of time in the Dark Age to not micro your scout, just send your scout around, do some of this powering. I tend to patrol my scout out for force of habit on stand ground usually. And yeah, this is a good time to put in a bit more micro if you want to start sh uh, scouting with sheep. Also with this legacy behavior, I select my scout and the next sheep. And I shift queue them to take the sheep, then go to the sheep. If you have the next sheep selected when you do that, 
he will walk right into the middle of all the villagers and he'll be taken instantly like that. For example, this is what we're doing here. So we don't need to take this, uh, this deer. Sorry, this sheep rather. You only need to take four before you take your boar. If your boar is close, then that's fine. But you might want to consider pushing a deer if your boar is a little bit further. Here we're going to see what happens when your boar is a little bit late. You gotta make sure that you're gonna have that little bit of TC idle time, it's not so ideal. But should you worry about it? No. As long as your TC isn't actually going idle, it makes so little difference in the end. So we're gonna start pushing some deer now. You can push them as long as you aren't multi sheeping with multiple sheep, it's fine to push them early. Before you take your first boar. But I do like to start pushing them after I get in the first boar. Then you can get some scouting information done a little bit later. You don't want to leave them too late. So six sheep, four wood, go get the boar, go build the house. What's next? I'm actually gonna leave this deer for a second. We're going to have four to the mill. We want as little dead um I almost said dead villagers. Of course you want as little dead villagers as possible. But you want as little dead animals under a TC. Around sixteen seventeen pop as well, go build the next house. I know this is sounding a little bit convoluted. But believe me, it's your standard FC. When this boar has around 100 food, that's generally a good um, good time to go and grab the next boar. We're just going to make sure we have 4 on berries. As I said, if you have dead animals in your TC, you can avoid paying so many villagers on berries right away, you can just add them later. Like move them from under your TC towards it. And that way you're taking them a little bit more efficiently. Where is this deer going? So now we've got four on each. Now we want to build our next lumber camp. When you have 19 population, 18 villagers, the next four villagers, they will go to wood. And also this is a good time to add a couple of farms. We still have some deer left, so I don't want to add the farms right away. If you add farms right away, it's not going to be so efficient. Something I'd also like to mention is if you have four villagers on berries, use shift Q and make them take them in this order. Make them go around the mill, take them so they're more efficient, two on each side, and it stays that way. I don't even know how this deer got over here, to be honest. I think deer pathing is really something else right now. So, the next four are on wood. Now we want to have one on stone. This is what we're going to be making our next TC with. The fourth TC, rather. Just make sure, again, on the wood, as much as possible, you've got two on each side. So that's a one on stone. Next two, go to gold. As you can see with the buried villagers here, they... Um, I was going to say they go instantly to the next one, but this villager's just proving me wrong. DE is its own best advert. Anyway, 2 to gold. Just make sure you're using the shift key features as much as possible to make things go more efficiently. Two farms, as I said, we add them earlier, but now we can add them because we just finished the deer. We don't want to have so many villagers, remember? Oh, after the first two on gold, you send the next two to wood. And then you click up. I always like to keep six on cheap as much as possible, just so they aren't, you know, there's not a lot of food rot. Don't have to use auto scout. I think auto scout is a great feature. In a 1v1, you'd be auto scouting, but you wouldn't really be doing this unless you're really going for something a little bit more risky. In a 1v1, you would preferably do like a 3TC boom. These fast free TCs, they are great, and I mean they are great for fast routes like Halbram, Arbram. But ultimately, you don't want to be going like fast three TC at a fourth later, slightly later imp time into elephants. Tend to have the upgrades a little bit late. So we're gonna add farms until we have about six. Six is quite good. Seven can also be okay. 
Actually, let's add one to seven. Keep an eye on your gold going up. This is quite a key thing. You need to take these villagers off of gold. Why? Because you don't need gold, you don't have a market. What are you going to spend it on? I like to send them to wood. Send them to wood gives you a little bit of extra... Uh, just a little bit of extra wood, actually. <laughs> to be more specific. And when you hit Feudal Age, just click straight up to Castle Age. Apologies, my voice is a little bit weird. My throat's been not ideal lately and I bit my tongue just for recording this, that's just my luck. So what else do you need to watch out for? Getting houses is always a key one. I always like to build one house on the way up with a straggler villager. Tier 3 and stragglers is fine. 3 is kind of ideal if you can get away with it. For example, if you're not so late up, you don't need to add an extra farm if you're being sloppy. That way you can send one to stone, you've got two villagers here, the other two to gold, you've got two villagers here, and two from, for example, a wood line. And those are the villagers you can build TCs with. So obviously we get build bid axe and horse collar, those are just essential upgrades that you should just be getting out of reflex. And when you can afford to queue up, get wheelbarrow. As soon as you hit castle age, you're going to get wheelbarrow, your farmer's going to start producing a lot more. And the thing with Khmer is that it's instant. The problem with, for example, a civ like Vikings that gets handcuffed for free, as well as wheelbarrow. At the start of Castle Age, or even sometimes in Feudal Age, you'll feel like you don't have the gold in time because they are carrying enough, but because you've just got the carrying bonus um, from the upgrade, they're actually not able to drop it off yet, automatically. So we're almost there, almost 90%. We're going to send our villagers towards where we want to start building our RTCs. Let's build one on the wood. So, as simple as, one there, one there, one there, two villagers on each. Get the bow saw, get the heavy plow, and we have all these economy upgrades. So we're going to want the main TC sending villagers to wood. This is still a little bit more efficient than this. This will need replaced quite soon. And we're going to be making farms with the villagers that are going to stone and gold. We don't need stone and gold, we just need farms. What we need to do is focus on 36 farms. That's the main number you need to re uh, remember as Khmer. For other civs you need different numbers. But Khmer specifically, just go hard until you have 36 farms. Keep as many villagers on wood as possible, for example this TC going to wood, and this TC going to wood. It will help you in the longer run. Just simply because then you have the wood to do things with. These villagers are done with the berries, we can afford to put them on farms. Let's pre-queue some farms with the shift queue. So when these villagers are done with this, they then start building some farms. Our TCs are building, and these villagers walk around the place to try and do anything. That's just the nature of DE though. And we're going to need a dedicated house builder. I want to build them more forward, protect this forward wall. You could, of course, building wall inside, we're not particularly focusing on it right now against AI. Turn on auto farm receding if you want to, I'd definitely recommend it. And just look at your TCs up here. For example, the ones that are better create villagers first, pay attention to those and queue up a villager in them as priority. The thing, again, as I was saying with Khmer, the return is just so quick. Oops. One TC went idle for a second. But yeah, we did all this. 28 plus 0 is a 26 plus 2 M time. Uh, castle time, rather. We started building our TCs right away got all these economy upgrades right away. There we go. That was a struggler behind there. Oops. So yeah, focus on those farms. Oops. I hate it when I queue a villagers in a TC that doesn't need villagers queued up in it. So yeah, I'm going to want to rebuild that lumber camp soon because it's quite important that you do. Keep efficient villagers. You can also, if it's not too laggy of a game, if you're not on a laggy server, as villagers, 
if you can't just click on them to make sure that you're queuing in the right TC. Then you can just wait till they expire, select all your TCs, you can select all TC hockey. Again, this is really important to use. If you uh, have set up those hockeys, I really recommend it. And just queue up a villager. It will queue up in the TC's auto idle first. So we're going to rebuild this lumber camp. But again, as we're creating villagers, we want to hammer out the farms as much as possible. Particularly with the stone, if you can. We've been a little bit heavy on stone. Not be paying that much attention. Probably should have been, but... It's fine. We'll need stone later, so it's not the end of the world to be getting a resource we need later. We are Khmer, food is not that much in demand. So we should have about 36 farmers by the time these couple complete. So then we can focus on things like, for example, Handcart. Handcart is a very powerful upgrade to have early. And also our villagers on stone. We want 4 to 5 villagers on stone. We've been on a little bit early, we're going to go with 4. But only 4 to 5. That's all you really need mid castle age. And you will be able to afford a castle when you hit imperial age or before it. And that's important for conscription primarily. So at this point, we can now start hammering on the gold. If we have a lot of villagers on witch, 29 is quite a lot. 24 is probably more what we want. 20 will actually even do. So at that point, we could then just build a mining camp and pull off and build more farms. We wanted 36 farms, but that doesn't mean you start uh, stop at 36 farms. You add more later, but that's just when you say, hey, I've got enough farms, now I can start doing other things. I don't need to focus so hard on it. So, just keep adding the farms. And also take villagers off wood if you feel you have too many. Gold money upgrades are really nice to get as well. The number one thing to actually remember when it comes to booming is get the farms you need, you can hammer on the gold later if you need it. Remember, we're Khmer, we can put farms anywhere. So we're going to be able to click up soon, around the minute 24 mark. I'm not using a market, we don't need to use one. We could use one later. I also like to get Loom. Loom is a nice upgrade to get if you're going to be going outside, for example, building stables. And uh, we're going to take a couple of villagers probably off a of gold here. You tend to have a little bit much gold. And let's click up. So, building houses outside in a team game could be quite nice. It's not... Um, that important. It could be more safe to make sure you're building houses outside though. Keep your TCs queued up. Get yourself a blacksmith. I'm gonna build that with two villagers, just get up that a little bit quicker. Realistically, you only need one stable by the time you hit Imperial Age. Why is this? Because you're not gonna be making elephants right away. You're going to be getting the elite battle elephant upgrade. So, while we're getting that, then we could get the other upgrades while we wait. Lots of things we could do. Keep your TCs queued, we're going to want to get quite a lot of villagers. And now we have enough stone to build the castle. We're going to build it here, our main goal is here, that's one valid reason. One or two villagers on stone after us is fine. A little bit piled on that gold, let's pull off for a bit. We can get a second blacksmith if we want, if we're a little bit late with this one. Then we can get the upgrades we need. Five stables, that's what we need in the end. We could also add a couple more stables later on. Just as our production increases. 113 villagers, we're not quite there yet, but we are imping with a decent time. We're also spending wood that we don't necessarily need right now. Remember, Tusk Swords is a really cheap upgrade in the castle, so Khmer is quite important to get. It's extra attack for very little resources. So, get a stable that isn't queuing up anything. Get a lead battle elephant. Make sure that's queuing up some upgrades. Queue up a couple of elephants, maybe add a couple more if you want to. Now you can get conscription. 
These villagers are done with that. Couple can do there. Couple to go. Couple can go over there. If we feel we've got a little bit much still, then we can send our villagers to our third gold in the team game. This is usually safer. In a 1v1, it's usually quite risky. Remember, for maximum efficiency, keep your villagers on separate golds. Uh, sorry, separate buildings, one on each. That's always far more efficient. We're going to want to get towards maybe closer to 80 farmers. And then this is the point we could transition into, for example, trade if we need to trade. Just gonna get rid of our stocking scout. So just one more upgrade to get. And that is last furnace. Then we have to wait for the rest. Oops. There you go. We can also build the market now if we really needed to. I don't think we do, but we're going to. And I think we have just enough villagers queued up to get around the villager camp that we need. But we already have 22 battle elephants at minute 30. And they're fully upgraded when this upgrade kicks in, so... It's not too shabby, is it? I also feel like no villager is going to build that farm, so I'm going to go do that now. Again, our economy is going to be kicking up a little bit. So... We're not going to be running our stables fully yet. We're still a little bit farmer short. But that's no problem. We're going to up our villager count to the final amount that we're going to need to pop cap ourselves with 50 elephants. I'm not entirely sure how I managed to patrol them over there without noticing, but sure. <laughs> and we're a little bit packed on our golds. We pull off, go to other golds. For example, now we go to this outside gold. We have a lot of map control at this point. If you're starting to push at this point, for example, 10, 15 elephants, you then can start sending them forward. Start building TCs on things like extra golds here. On a team game, there are lots in the middle. You want to go for that. And we are pop capped when these are finished creating. So what are we at? 50 elephants at 32 minutes 20 seconds. Rather decent build, don't forget, get your eco upgrades if you can. Collecting stone is kind of an important one to get because you can easily go forward, build uh, mining camps. On team games your extra goals are stones going to be a little bit larger. But this is a really part stop army. A lot of people, they just won't even have fully upgraded paladins at this point, and I'm talking about top TG players whenever they end up on Arena TG. If you learn strat like this and you pick Khmer, you're in a strong position. If you're against Khmer, how do you counter this? Heavy Scorpion is quite a good way. Hulp plus Seedram, add in Scorpion if you have a decent Scorpion Civ. It's really hard as Khmer to add in your own onager, but just look at the resources skyrocket. You can just easily queue up elephants for days as you lose them, and we're only a minute later. So really, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but if you start perfecting this boom, that's something you might want to look into. So, just while we're done with this, I'm just going to talk about a couple of things. Juan Franco, my bro, he has published a text version of this. I gave him a recording of one of these builds. I um, helped him with some of the notes, and he's made a really easy to read, a really nice text version of this. I'm going to put a disclaimer at the start of the video, um, so you've already heard it, this and were to get it. But again, just at the end of the video, I would like to give credit to him because it looks really good. It's a really nice way to learn strategies, I think. And I really recommend you checking it out. So, this is the Khmer 28 plus 0. I might get back into making more guides. I know this one's probably been a little bit sloppy. I would rather, you know, get back into the ambition to maybe write scripts for some guides. Let's see how they go, but this effectively is the best boom in AoE 2 in my opinion and yeah it takes all the criteria for me so let's have a quick look at the stats just in case 2738 imperial time we're a little bit late on this one I was a little bit sloppy with taking the stone in my bad only one second of idle time to the castle age I'm not going to complain about that too much but remember this is quite an early castle time for a lot of builds a 4 TC with a good economy save is more like this but then again, you're still behind Khmer, really. 
Mario for, can afford to do all in imp really fast. So many resources collected. As you can see, uh, this tells us nothing really. <laughs> yeah, we are really bong in the score, lots of research. And yeah, so this is a build I would definitely recommend for pocket team games. I will do probably a regular 4TC for regular civs, and hopefully you enjoy that. Have a good day.